DP203 or Data Engineering in Microsoft Azure is one certificate that every Azure aspirant looks forward to who loves the data and who wants to build a career out of it. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Once again today, here I am with a case study type of question on DP203. Please note, although this is our 19th part on DP203, when it comes to the case study, this is our second one. The first case study was covered in part 15. And friends, if you want a free PDF file, keep watching the video. I will ask a question during this video. And if you get it right, you will get a free PDF file of entire case study, including the answers. So without wasting any time, let's read our case study. So let's begin our case study and understand the overview section. The section says that the Fashion Limited is a clothing retailer based in Seattle. The company has 2000 retail stores across the United States and an emerging online presence. The network contains an active directory forest named the fashion.com. The forest is integrated with an Azure Active Directory, Azure AD, tenant named the fashion.com. The Fashion Limited has an Azure subscription associated to the fashion.com Azure AD. Now let's move on to the existing environment detail. Here let's first start with the transactional data. It says that the fashion has three years of customer, transactional, operational, sourcing and supplier data comprised of 10 billion records stored across multiple on-premises Microsoft SQL servers. The SQL server instances contain the data from various operational systems. The data is loaded into the instances by using SQL Server Integration Services, also known as SSIS. Moving ahead, it says you estimate that combining all the product sales transaction into a company-wide sales transaction data set will result in a single table that will contain 5 billion rows with one row per transaction. Most queries targeting the sales transaction data will be used to identify which product were sold in retail stores and which product were sold in online during the different time periods. Sales transaction data that is older than three years will be removed monthly. Moving ahead, it says that you plan to create a retail store table that will contain the address of each retail store. The table will be approximately 2 MB. The queries for retail store sales will include the retail store addresses. Now it says that you plan to create a promotional table that will contain a promotion ID. The promotion ID will be associated to a specific product. The product will be identified by promotion ID and this table will be approximately 5 GB. We have more information on the existing environment here. This starts with the streaming Twitter data. It says that the e-commerce department at the fashion develops an Azure logic app that captures trending Twitter feeds, referencing the company's products and pushes the products to Azure event hubs. Further, we have planned changes. It says the fashion plans to implement the following changes. The first one is load the sales transaction data set to Azure Synapse Analytics. The second one is integrate on-premises data stores with Azure Synapse Analytics by using SSIS packages. The third one we have is use Azure Synapse Analytics to analyze Twitter feeds to access customer sentiments about the products. Now let's understand what are the sales transaction data set requirements. Here it says that the fashion identifies the following requirements for the sales transaction data set. The first one is partition data that contains sales transaction records. Partition must be designed to provide efficient loads by month. Boundary values must belong to the partition on the right. Second one says ensure that queries joining and filtering sales transaction records based on product ID complete as quickly as possible. Third, we have implement a surrogate key to account for the changes to the retail store addresses. On the fourth, it says ensure that the data storage cost and performance are predictable. Lastly, we have minimize how long it takes to remove old records. And now we have some data related to the customer sentiment analytics requirements. 
Here it says that the fashion identifies the following requirements for the customer sentiment analytics. The first one says allow the fashion users to use Polybase in an Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool to query the content of the data records that host the Twitter feeds. Then we have data must be protected by using row level security. The users must be authenticated by using their own Azure AD credentials. The third one says maximize the throughput of ingesting Twitter feeds from event hubs to Azure storage without purchasing additional throughput or capacity units. Then we have store Twitter feeds in Azure storage by using event hub capture and the feeds will be converted into paraquet files. Next, it says ensure that the data store supports Azure AD based access control down to the object level. And then we have minimize administrative effort to maintain the Twitter feed data records. Lastly, it gives purge Twitter feed data records that are older than two years. Now let's understand some of the data integration requirement. It says that the fashion identifies the following data integration requirements. The first one is use an Azure service that leverages the existing SSIS package to ingest on-premises data into datasets stored in a dedicated SQL pool of Azure Synapse Analytics and transform the data. The second one is identify a process to ensure that changes to ingestion and transformation activities can be version controlled and develop independently by multiple data engineers. So those were all the details given in the case study. We started with understanding the overview section. We understood what are the existing environment details followed by the planned changes. And then we read about the sales transaction customer sentiment and data integration requirements. I strongly recommend you to rewind the video and go through the entire sections that we have covered so far before we jump to the question and answer section. Now let's move ahead and read our first question. So here it comes our question number one. The question says that you need to implement the surrogate key for the retail store table. The solution must meet the sales transaction data set requirements. What should you create? The first option given is a table that has an identity property. Then the second one is a system version temporal table. Thirdly, we have a user defined sequence object. And lastly, given is a table that has a foreign key constraint. Now, let me first tell you which sales transaction data set requirement is the question talking about. Here it comes. Here we can see that we have a requirement that says implement a surrogate key to account for changes to the retail store addresses. And this requirement, my friends, was given in the sales transaction data set requirement. I hope you remember this requirement. In case not, you can always go back and rewind the video. Now, let me first give you the answer. The answer for this question is a table that has an identity property. The justification comes here. It says a surrogate key on a table is a column with a unique identifier for each row. The key is not generated from the table data. Data modelers like to create surrogate key on their tables when they design data warehouse models. And of course, you can use the identity property to achieve this goal simply and effectively without affecting load performance. Before moving ahead to the next question, let me remind you that part eight in Azure Fundamental Series is coming in next few days. So if you or anyone you know wants to deeply understand the core Azure concepts, then this is the best series to watch. Moving ahead, we have question number two. It says that you need to design an analytical storage solution for the transactional data. The solution must meet the sales transaction data set requirement. What should you include in the solution? Here you have to give the answer on two levels. The first one is table type to store retail store data. And then we have table type to store promotional data. The options are pretty much the same for both of them. The first one is hash. Then we have replicated and the third one is round robin. Now, friends, before jumping to the answer, I'm sure that you want to know which requirements are we fulfilling in this question. Here it comes. The first requirement that we are fulfilling is that you plan to create a promotional table that will contain a promotion ID. 
the promotion id will be associated to a specific product the product will be identified by product id the table will be approximately 5 gb where is it coming from this is coming from the existing environment section then the second requirement that we are fulfilling is ensure that queries joining and filtering sales transaction records based on the product id complete as quickly as possible and this is coming from the sales transaction dataset requirements i am hopeful friend that you are liking the way that we are trying to associate the requirements with that of question of course this will not happen in the real exam we are just trying to help you associate how to match the sections in case study with that of the questions if you like this style of presentation please put a yes in the comment section now let's check out the answer for the first part of the question here it comes it is the replicated and the second part of question we have the answer as hash now let me give you the justification here it comes the first one says that the replicated table which we chose as the first answer does not require any data movement for the joins because the entire table is already present on each compute node to move the data the query plan contains an operation called broadcast move operation this type of data movement operation slows the query performance and is eliminated by using replicated table moving on with the hash well hash distributed table improve query performance on large fact table and as we read in the question that this table is going to be 5 gb in size that's why we have chosen hash as the answer to this question now let's move ahead to the question number three it says that you need to implement an azure synapse analytics database object for storing the sales transaction data the solution must meet the sales transaction data set requirements what should you do once again we have to answer on two levels the first one is transaction sql ddl command to use the second part is partitioning option to use in the with clause of ddl statement the options given for the first part are create external table create table and lastly we have create view and the correct answer for this part of the question is create table moving on to the next part we have options as format options format type range left for values and range right for values the correct answer for this question is range right for values and now comes the question that you need to answer to get the free pdf file of this case study just a while back i mentioned that in coming days we have a next part coming up in azure fundamental series now to get a free pdf file of this case study on dp203 you have to tell me the part number which is coming up in the azure fundamental series you can of course rewind the video to get the answer now let's move ahead with the question number four it says that you need to design a data retention solution for the twitter feed data records the solution must meet the customer sentiment analytics requirement which azure storage functionality should you include in the solution your options are change feed soft delete time based retention and the last one is life cycle management and exactly which requirement are we fulfilling we are fulfilling the requirement which said purge twitter feed data records that are older than two years and this one is coming from the customer sentiment analytics requirement section and the correct answer for this question is option d life cycle management now here comes another interesting question question number five it says that you need to implement version changes to the integration pipelines the solution must meet the data integration requirement in which order should you perform the action here we are given with some of the actions the first one is merge changes second one is create a pull request then we have third one as create a feature branch fourth one is publish changes and the fifth one is create a repository and a main branch please note that in this question you just have to order or sort these actions in the correct order so let's check out the correct order of these actions here it comes in the answer area the first action that you must perform is create a repository and a main branch of course that goes without saying you must first create a repository and that repository should have a main branch once you have the main branch the second step would be to create a feature branch once you have the feature branch then you can start initiating or creating a pull request 
and then of course once you have a pull request you can merge your changes once your changes are merged to the main branch then of course as a last step you can publish the changes i hope you understand the correct sequence of the actions that we need to perform if not you can always reach me in the comment section now let's move on to the question number 6 which is the last question of this case study the question says that you need to design a data storage structure for the product sales transaction the solution must meet the sales transaction data set requirements what should you include in the solution your options are hash replicated set the distribution column to product id and the last option is set the distribution column to month now that we have done some of the questions already friends i would suggest you to rewind the video go to the case study section where we read all the details and try to figure out which requirements are actually linked to this question but anyways i will tell you the correct requirements please try to match off your understanding on the requirements with the one that i'm going to show you it's very important because if you won't be able to associate the requirements with the question you will never be able to crack case studies in these kind of examinations so let me show you the requirements the first requirement that we are trying to fulfill is this one which says the partition data that contains sales transaction records partitions must be designed to provide efficient loads by the month boundary values must belong to the partition on the right this is coming from the sales transaction data set requirement section the second requirement that we are fulfilling is this one which says ensure the queries joining and filtering sales transaction records based on the product id complete as quickly as possible once again this is coming from sales transaction data set requirement section now let me give you the correct answers the first option that you have to select is hash and the second correct option that you have to select is set the distribution column to product id so that was all i hope you enjoyed this case study on dp203 guys please remember the case studies are very important an integral part of dp203 exams also please do not miss to watch our other exciting case study series on az104 and if you are an azure beginner then azure fundamental course is just the right choice for you links for all these videos are right there in the description box friends please like and share these videos to help us reach more and more cloud learners and please do subscribe to the channel and share your feedback you can join us on facebook instagram and twitter where you get regular short updates in cloud space thank you so much for learning with us i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching if this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.